month of September. Today it is a very, very great pleasure to welcome back a son of Hamilton Diocese, His Excellency Bishop Gerard Burgi, the Bishop of St. Catharines. Your Excellency, we hope that this will be the first of many <laughs> visits to the Basilica. Thank you very much, Father Ian. It is a great joy and privilege to be here with you. I want to thank your rector for uh, his very kind and warm welcome, for his invitation to be with you today. It is always wonderful to come home to this wonderful diocese, and in particular to be able to worship in this spectacular church, basilica, dedicated to Mary, the Mother of God, Our Lady Immaculate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord.
as we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary. Grant, we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, Christ has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before God provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. The word of the Lord.
One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, why are, you, why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let me begin by saying how heartwarming it is for me to see so many of you out this morning to pay particular honor to our Blessed Mother, Mary, the Mother of God, and our Mother, too. In the Gospel, Jesus once again is being challenged by the scribes and Pharisees. It seems that there were so many around our Lord who wanted to try to undermine him. The scribes and Pharisees, the religious leaders at the time, wanted to discredit him because they were jealous. They did not want people to follow the Lord. And so they looked for every opportunity to question him, to undermine him, and to try to embarrass him. And yet, all of their efforts were to no avail because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And they could never undermine our Lord. Today, you are part of a wonderful tradition in the Diocese of Hamilton, where for a number of months, over the, before and during the summer and slightly after, you have a monthly celebration to honor Mary. And this indeed is something very good, and I believe very firmly, very truly, that it will bring many graces to your diocese, because whoever honors the Mother of God receives many blessings. In the Gospel, we see one of the reasons why we honor Mary. There are many reasons. I'm going to focus on three simple reasons. There are many more. The first is that just as the scribes and Pharisees tried to undermine Jesus and draw people away, our Blessed Mother Mary wants to draw us to her Son. And in many ways, she is like a beautiful mirror, a gilded mirror of exquisite beauty and quality. Because whatever honor we give to Mary, she reflects to her Son. We can never forget the great words of the Magnificat when her cousin Elizabeth was saying, Mary, you're so great, you're so wonderful. Who am I that the mother of God should come and visit me? What are the first words out of Mary's mouth? Mouth. It's not, well, you're right, Elizabeth, I am pretty good. In fact, I am pretty great. I am special. You should feel honored. No. The words are, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul rejoices in my Savior. Mary deflects whatever honor given to her, to her son, and she wants nothing more than all of us to love her son, to adore and worship her son, to follow her son, and to be like her son, to be holy. And so all of her efforts are to draw us to Jesus, not to push us away, but to glorify her son and to draw us to her son. 
Often the spiritual writers of the past centuries, especially the early fathers of the church, often spoke of Mary as the moon. The moon only has light because it reflects the sun. It's the light of the sun that the moon reflects. And so too our Blessed Mother. She reflects the sun, not S-U-N, but S-O-N. She reflects her son to us, to draw us to him, so that we can love and serve the Lord. One of the other great qualities of our blessed Mother Mary comes to us from one of the great saints of the church who had a very powerful devotion to our Blessed Mother, a strong devotion, Saint Louis Marie de Montfort. And he was speaking of the intercessory role of our Blessed Mother, and he used an analogy. He said that when we make a petition to Jesus Christ, our Blessed Mother intercepts that petition, and when we go through her, it is enhanced. Because Mary only wants to give what is best to her son, nothing less, because she loves him so perfectly. And so when we go to Jesus through Mary, the great intercessor, what she does is if there's anything lacking in our petition, she will add to it. If it is faulty, if it is weak, if it is not as beautiful as it can be, she will add what is missing because she only wants to give what is perfect to her son. And that is why throughout the centuries, Mary has always been the great intercessor. That many, like Marie de Montfort, have said through Mary to Jesus. It doesn't take away from the son, not at all. But she wants to give to her son the best. That is to me a, a wonderful analogy because it explains why there is nothing wrong with growing through Mary to Jesus. You know, it is very interesting that at the time of the Reformation, there were three things that the reformers attacked. The mass, the priesthood, and our Blessed Mother Mary. And that is why you find in many of our Protestant churches, they don't believe in the true presence. Over the last number of Sundays, we have been focusing in the Gospel of St. John on the Bread of Life discourse where Jesus says, I am the Bread of Life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. The Reformers rejected that. And the priesthood is intimately connected to the Eucharist. You can't have the Mass without the, without the priesthood. And the priest without the Mass makes no sense. And finally, the Reformers rejected Mary. And that is why in so many of our Protestant churches, there is no devotion to Mary, no honor to Mary, not at all. And they would say precisely, why go through Mary? Go right to the Lord. We don't need an intermediary. Go to the top, go to the source. But our faith teaches us when we go through Mary, it only enhances our request. And finally, the third aspect of our Blessed Mother that I wish to reflect upon is simply that phrase, Mother. When Jesus hung on the cross, the crucifix, all people ran from him. His closest friends, even Peter, denied him three times. And who, who were the two faithful ones that stood by him, not only in good times, but in his most difficult moments? At the foot of the cross is his blessed mother, Mary, and also the beloved disciple, John. We all know that the last words of anyone before they die, before they go to be with God, are very important. We revere those words, and usually, a person is not going to say anything trite or insignificant on their deathbed. If these are going to be their last words, they want to share something significant. And what were the last words of Jesus, very, very near to the end? He says to his blessed mother, Mary, and looks at John and says, Here is your son. And to John, he points to his blessed mother and says, Here is your mother. Tradition teaches us that at that moment, Jesus gave his mother to us. He gave his mother to the church. 
What an incredible gift that we have this mother, this mother in heaven, who is an advocate for us. But most importantly, she has a mother's love, a mother's love for her son, but also for each one of us, her adopted children. And she is always there to help us when we fall, to lift us, to clean our wounds, to comfort us, to remind us, don't be afraid, I'm with you. If you recall those beautiful words from the Mount Tepeyac in what is now Mexico, Mexico City, Our Lady of Guadalupe said those same words to Juan Diego. Am I not your mother? Am I not here for you? Do I not love you? Be not afraid. Our Heavenly Mother says the same thing to each one of us. This is why it is so important to honor Mary. I believe that every time we honor Mary, as I said, she reflects to her son, it makes Jesus very happy. Think about it. Think about your own lives. Think about your own mother. Usually, if someone speaks highly of your mother, it makes you feel good. If someone says to you, your mother is such an incredible woman, she's such an inspiration to me, she's so kind, it's the same with Jesus. When we praise his mother, when we sing her praises, it makes him proud. He's saying from heaven, yes, that's my mother. But remember, my dear people, she's also your mother, and everything she did for me, she will also do for you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are living in very challenging times. There is no question. It is a perfect storm. There seems to be chaos in so many different levels, politically, economically, even from nature. We see it in the area of health with COVID-19, and even in the church, at times great confusion. This is a perfect storm. But I also believe that God is up to something here. I don't know what it is. This is just not coincidence. Something is happening. And for me, as a successor of the apostles, my challenge is simply, throughout all of this, not to run, not to hide, not to scream, but to remain faithful. Remain faithful to the Lord so that when the dust settles, I am still standing, and so are the sheep entrusted to my care. That is the faith response, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Not to be afraid. You see, Satan is very much alive. Satan was conquered. He's a loser. He lost but he still has the power to disturb, to disturb us. And one of the greatest sources that he has in his arsenal is fear and division. Fear and division, and we see so much of that today. I am shocked at how divided we're becoming. People pitted against people, vaxxers, non-vaxxers, COVID, non-COVID deniers, left, right, traditional, conservative, all of that. It just, I'm sure to a certain extent it's always been there, but it seems to be more intensified. And people are becoming more violent in their responses, more virulent in, in their kind of response. And it's very tragic. But I believe this. At times like this, we go to the Lord, but we also rely on our Blessed Mother. What did the angel Gabriel say to her at the Annunciation? Be not afraid, Mary. Be not afraid. The Lord says that to us also. And this is where St. Therese of Lisieux can teach us a great deal about faith. She was known as the Child Jesus. She had that trial, childlike trust in the Lord. 
and she'd often say, I don't need to worry, my daddy will look after me. My mother will look after me. At times like this, isn't that what we should be doing? Some people who have no faith would accuse us of being irresponsible. Aren't you worried? Aren't you concerned? Aren't you going to do something? No. My daddy will look after me, my heavenly father. My mother, my heavenly mother, will look after me. I will not be afraid. I'll remain faithful. I will keep moving forward, trusting in the Lord. This is why our Catholic faith is such a treasure. Even though it's being attacked and undermined in so many ways, the evil one is lobbying and lobbying so many things at us. But we must remain resolute. We must be firm in our faith. We must know that the Lord has not abandoned us. The Lord is with us. And together, we are strong, divided, we fall. Do not be divided. May our faith continue to unite us. May our faith inspire us. May we always joyfully follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us, very humbly, today, give thanks for the Mother of God, who, number one, always leads us to Christ, to number two is our advocate. When we go through Mary to Jesus, our prayers are enhanced. And finally, and I believe most importantly, our mother who loves us. Be not afraid. Am I not your mother? May God bless you. As we celebrate this Marian day, let us bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father in union with Mary, the Mother of God. That the Church may effectively proclaim to the world the divinity of Christ and the special role of our Blessed Mother, and that through her intercession, all who minister to God's people, especially the bishops and priests, may be strengthened by God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. The leaders of all nations will seek justice and peace for all peoples as they lead their nations, and that all people who are deprived of peace, justice, and liberty may be blessed with God's consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that the souls of those children who died at residential schools may live forever with God in heaven, that their families and communities may have consolation and peace, and that the church in Canada may walk the road of truth and reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord, Lord, that all young people of the world may take Mary as a model to do the will of the Father with the help of the Holy Spirit and the example of her divine Son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, that Almighty God will bless all who are working to ensure the health safety, welfare, and dignity of all people 
in the midst of this global pandemic. We pray also that the mercy of God will see us safely through this time of crisis to a brighter future. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That all who are sick or suffering in any way may know the healing presence of the Lord and his blessed mother. We pray to the Lord. That our beloved dead may be born anew in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. As we celebrate this Marian day, let us ask our Blessed Lady to join her prayers to ours as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may advance toward eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. salvation to praise your mighty deeds in exaltation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise for truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Father, we make humble petition and prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and Wayne, his assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your service. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Joseph, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, 
and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, 
Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on the sins of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not enough that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. It's wonderful to see so many visitors with us this morning. Just a brief announcement about the process for receiving Holy Communion. Would those in the side sections please approach first? You go to the uh, bishop or me at the side altar, return to your place down the center aisle and back up the side.
For those of you in the center sections, please leave your place by the side aisle, approach the center, return to your places by the center aisles. Please remember in the communion line, we do have to observe the proper social distancing unless you're from the same household. Also, the diocese asks that those of you who wish to receive Holy Communion on the tongue, please wait until those who have received in the hand are finished.
Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that having received your Son born of the tender virgin under sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. After Mass, it will take just a few moments to prepare the altar for our Holy Hour. Following Mass, then, there will be adoration of the Blessed Sacrament throughout our Holy Hour, the Rosary and the Litany of the Blessed Virgin, some time of quiet adoration before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, and then we will finish with praying the Angelus and Benediction at approximately noon. Oh, you are all very welcome, and I hope that you'll stay. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.